<laughs> Hello, online conference. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us for our online collab. Well, one of them. This is Renee CF. Hi, guys. And I'm Tyler Douglas, and we both do a lot for our youth ministry here at Hillsong. Um, and we wanted to talk to you today about youth programs. Friday Nights 101, what we do for a youth here in um, Hillsong, how we do it, why we do it, all those kind of things. Um, and I just thought I would ask one of my best friends to come and help me because you are one of my best friends. And Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> she knows a little little thing or two about youth and, and how we do programs and the why behind what we do. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, do you want to like talk a little bit about who you are? Because you're yeah. your own person and I just introduced you. I know. And it was a great introduction. Thanks, Thank Renee. you. Um, yep. Yeah. As Tyler said, I'm Renee and I do a lot with our youth ministry as well. But I also tour with Young and Free mm. um, about six months out of the year. And it's a lot of months. It's a lot of months. It's 50% of them. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I um, come home and on Friday nights, I serve at our youth mm -hmm. um, program. So we have Fuel, Wildlife, Powerhouse. It's different age groups. Um, and we yep. like Fuel is like junior high. Yeah, so that's like the 12 to 15 year olds, 14 yep. year olds. And then we have wildlife senior high which yep. is senior high like 15 16 17 18 and then we have powerhouse mm -hmm. which is 18 up pretty much 18 to 25 and we serve over all of them on a friday night yeah and um i guess midweek stuff as well to prepare for that totally friday, so. we also have like massive youth conferences that we do throughout the year renee um worship leads often at those we get to do that together which yep. is really fun and um what did you do though before you started touring for young and free Oh gosh. Like maybe within youth because like, okay. so Renee obviously <clears throat> is not here half the year because she's representing youth on tour. Mm. But I know that we, we, used, we used to be at youth all the time, which we still are, but obviously uh, Renee tours a lot. So maybe <laughs> tell them what you do, what you did before you were away for half the year. Um, yeah, so on a Friday night for like a good, I don't know how many years, maybe like it was a while. three or four years. Yeah. Um, my specific role was like a part of the worship team, a part of the creative team, but I would also do stage design mm -hmm. um, and also do like, we have a thing called items. So items are like when we do, yeah. like, I don't know. Creative what, moments, a creative like moment a during the night. dance item, a love medley. Yeah. Something fun to like help capture the kids' attention, maybe help, like a take yeah. home factor. Like help maybe feel people that are coming for the first time feel included. We'll do something like that. Um, and then, yeah. And then, so I would pretty much be like running that with Tyler on a regular basis. And yeah. it's hard work. I'll it tell is. you that much. It's interesting. It was, it was fun times though. <laughs> it was fun. I think the best thing that Renee, is. yeah, I was going to say the best <laughs> thing that Renee now brings to the team on a Friday night was we've got obviously different people now that mm. she's not here for half of the year, which is fine, but she will come in and she'll be like, oh, maybe we can fix this. And she brings a level of experience and I guess like senior authority that I think helps our youth ministry out in a big way. For example, we just had a youth conference here in Sydney um, very recently and Renee um, came in and looked at the items we were doing and she kind of gave great feedback that helped steer the items, I guess, to work in a better way. And I was really thankful for that. And so I thought, you'd be someone great to interview about this stuff. Really all I do when I come and see them is I just like cheer for them and I'm like, well done, because I know <laughs> how it. hard it was. So I'm like, just anything, if you get anything across the line, well done. Legit. <laughs> and um, I guess for myself, I sometimes get to tour with our young and free team, mm -hmm. but my job here is to run everything we do youth creative for Australia. So based here on a Friday night, running our youth program. So I work with kind of now the next generations of the Renee CFs, like our Creative Moments crew, um, production guys. We have vocal oversights and get to meet um, with these guys weekly. We get to talk about what we're going to do at a youth program, um, how we're going to do it, and I think all those cool things. So I love that I get to do that. You're very and, good um, at it. Thank you very much. I, I enjoy it. It's really fun. And so I guess I wanted to ask you, why, if people are watching and they might not understand why we do a program, what is maybe a couple of reasons if you think why we do youth on a Friday night and maybe put the creative effort into it? Yeah, I think like just on a practical level, like we're dealing with people that are under 18 and have parents. So having a program is very helpful because you know that there's a start time and there's an end yeah. time and you have to sort out what is going to work within that. What's the most effective? What keeps people like the youth captured more? Yeah. Um, and what, where you're going to have enough time to put in the important things like an altar call or worship or, you know, those kind of things as well. So it's really good to actually sort out the different time slots of the night. Mm -hmm. And um, I think also like having that um, expectancy every single week um, is good for them because it creates consistency. And then yeah. sometimes we like to mix it up a little bit and switch the program upside down within yeah, guidelines. Yeah, totally. Um, just to keep them on their toes as well. So, yeah. yeah. I think that's perfect. And I guess like the another amazing thing that we do these programs for is it's not quite as like 
formal as a Sunday service, right? So there's items like Renee was talking about before, but then it's also a great program for kids to invite friends and like to bring friends and go, hey, this is my church. Like it's so different. It's not what you would maybe classify as a religious service. And so mm. I guess that's another reason why we do it. And it's super fun. And I feel like we've had a formula since the dawn of time. I, I don't know. know, like what are some of the things we do every Friday? I mean, we start with worship yep, most of the time. This is like a, yeah, yeah, it's general. a general. Sometimes we yeah, do an item and... maybe at the beginning, but we'll yeah. start with worship and then we'll go into an MC spot. Someone will come up and talk. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will go into maybe offering yeah, or use news happens. Yeah. Or, um, or an item even. Like yeah, we, we change actually, that when we do it. Yeah, we just slot it in wherever it works. Totally. Um, and then we get, um, yeah, I said offering. And then we get uh, the person to preach up. Mm -hmm. or a Q&A, totally. it's nice to mix that up as well. Um, and then we do altar call and then we do a praise party and even a dance party if we yeah. have time as well. That's pretty much it. The, I think the essence of what we do in a youth program is that sometimes the way we do it changes. So we might have students preach on a Friday night. We will normally have students worship lead. We try and keep it student focused on what we do with our programs because I feel like we've seen that nothing works better in a youth program than having the students run it or mm -hmm. do as much as they can. There's like, a, like we have, um, a couple really of our young friends that we're bringing through and when they preach or when they lead worship like the room just goes off like how many times does a kid get up to sing an item and like as soon as the spotlight comes on the kid the whole room is just like ah! yeah whereas like if Renee or I to do it they'd probably be like oh these guys again like we've seen you before yeah like, this is nothing new <laughs> yeah um but yeah we normally do that I think something that we have not done as much recently but we always get a feature somewhere is like tribal challenges mm -hmm. we have that which is really fun whether that's something like tug of war or a fun game a game yeah, yeah. like a like a we do a game called don't forget the lyrics where oh, great game we'll just get people up and people in their connect groups will like volunteer for somebody go, to go up yeah and we'll play a song and then we'll stop and they have to sing and usually they're not very good singers so it's really fun <laughs> Um, it is pretty funny. But just try and think of like those games that people, like everyone can get involved. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that like Tyler said before that's really awesome is actually like just getting the youth involved. Yeah. I know that sometimes it's so hard to put um, opportunity in a young person's hand to entrust them with that platform or that job. But the thing is like youth is the best trial ground for yeah. church. It's the best place to bring up people and it's the best place for them to make mistakes. Mm. So I think like we fully support like getting your youth to lead worship, to jump on camera, to run the um, front of house if yeah. you have that console kind of thing or to... Um, or to MC. produce yeah. or MC or There's anything. There's so many opportunities. And you can set them up for a week, a win, sorry. Like we yeah. have um, someone like an, a musical director, which is probably in a different masterclass. Yeah. Um, so with a musical director, you'll have a student on and you'll have someone that's a bit more experienced and you'll pretty much get them to do everything that they can do to be as active as possible on their musical director mic. Mm. But just in case the service falls, you've got the... Experienced person. The experienced like person to just jump in and be like, very good, but like, actually we need to end big or you know what it is. Like, yeah. you have to do something like that because they have been doing it for longer. But just set the youth up for a win and like entrust them with everything and anything. Mm -hmm. And if it flops, it's okay because it's only at youth. Yeah. So, and they have next week to do it again. And you just do it again and again and again. And yeah. I'm so grateful that someone took a chance on us. Lydia, I was literally about to say like what you're saying is gold because we wouldn't be doing this collab right now and we wouldn't be touring and we wouldn't be worship leading on weekend services if it wasn't for someone taking a gamble on Renee and myself. That's literally why we're doing what we're doing because someone handed us a mic on a Friday night and went, here's a chance at singing. Mm -hmm. And then we, I will speak for myself because Renee's a perfect angel and knows how to <laughs> sing and dance yeah. and act. But I probably sounded so bad when I first ever sung, but someone decided to keep, uh, I guess, persistence with me. And now here we are today, Yeah, which is crazy. So yeah, I would definitely say what Renee said is the number one goal, I think besides kids meeting Jesus, cause I think that's why we do everything. But I think for our youth programs, the number one goal has to be involving our kids. Like that is the bread and butter of what we do. It doesn't need to be perfect. I think it needs to be kids focused cause that will help kids connect even better. I think they kind of get sick of these older guys like ourselves, like doing things and especially kids that keep coming each and every week. And so I guess that's our one tip to you is obviously keep it Jesus focused. 
um, and everything points towards altar call and I guess teaching biblical truths and principles, but definitely taking a gamble, taking a risk on young kids, making sure that's what the program is all about. And I guess if you were to say one more thing, it would be definitely like having fun. Like that's what we do. Like that's essence of youth is Jesus, kids and fun. Mm -hmm. And that's what we love to do. Renee, what are some struggles of leading young people in youth, both maybe in like praise and worship, but then also growing them, maturing them to kind of take that next step in leadership? What do you reckon? I think we just need to understand that, um, that that period of time, like if you're anything older than 18, then you know that that period of time in life was a time that you're actually still trying to figure out your own identity. You're still trying to figure totally. out who you should be, what you should look like, what you should say. Am I too loud? Am I too quiet? Yeah, Am legit. I good looking? Am I not good? Like you've just got so many questions because you're surrounded at school, you're surrounded at church so with stuff. people with different opinions and different styles. And like, so it's just, it's crazy. So you've got to actually just take that. That's what they're going through yeah. um, in those years and you just got to go like well what's the best way that I can make them feel loved and included mm. and I guess like one thing that we do um, is like we'll try and do things on a Friday night like do a theme like Valentine's Day yeah. and just make it all about like love and like love hearts and do a relationship seminar but then also be like dress up as like a famous partner in yeah, totally. you know yeah, history like Beyonce or, and Jay-Z I don't yeah. know if we're allowed to say we're allowed to say that Beyonce yeah great just checking with it's the just, an example. just an example <laughs> but totally I think what, like you're saying yeah. keep it relevant for kids like that's a helpful tip to help them engage the more we can do like love items like that are top 40 charts and whatnot is completely correct. Yeah, and keep, make, like help them to feel included. So like doing themes like that or like, what's another theme that uh, we've done? We've done like formal ones. So yeah. schools, I know like in like, obviously the States, there are things like- um, Prom. Proms. Prom. And prom. I don't know wow, how to say it. Like uh, prom. But here in, here in Australia and in Sydney and across uh, the whole country, it's not just Sydney that does it, is they have formals towards the end of the year. And so sometimes we will do formals where kids can dress up. They maybe can take that special someone to youth and we'll make it just feel a little bit more classier. We'll have awards. Think of like Oscar, Grammy type like of a night. And so, yeah, kids like that and they have their formals and whatnot. So it keeps it relevant. And then those are the nights that like they love to bring their friends as well. And they like, love hey, to bring this their is friends. A night. Like yeah. come to our youth formal with us. It's like our school formal, but there's going to be no teachers. So I was yeah. like, yeah, great. Let's like hang. Yeah. Or like another <laughs> thing that we do that's a bit like cheaper, um, I guess for some students is like op shop or thrift shop yes. kind of nights where you literally just have to get an outfit for, from a thrift shop and wear it to youth. And just that, like in saying all that, like that is literally just to help people that are struggling with insecurities, struggling with what people may think of it to just be like, oh, if this is the theme, then maybe I can be included into yeah. something. Because I think that one thing that youth are struggling with is loneliness. All they're doing is comparing yeah. and they struggle with loneliness. So if we can try our best to make them feel like they have value and that they're included, that is mm -hmm. the best thing that you can do. And then they will feel empowered to be a leader and to do the same for others. Yeah, it's a great answer. I guess the only thing I would say to kind of like, I guess give my mm -hmm. like two cents worth is like Renee talked about it. They're young, they're still understanding. And so we just give them a lot of grace when it mm -hmm. comes to serving. We don't expect the best out of them. We don't expect it, <clears throat> excuse me, to be like a polished performance. We have to try and understand what are they going through week to week? How can we give them grace? And then how can we also celebrate them and help them to become better? And so I think um, grace is a big one, just knowing that they're not going to be perfect overnight. But like, I guess, I guess we're a cool little testament, not that we're the bee's knees or anything. What a saying, bees knees. Bees not, knees. Not that we're perfect or that we've made it, but like people were gracious with us. Like people didn't expect us to lead at church on a Sunday after only leading at youth for a Friday night. Like people were patient with us and they were gracious. And so I think you've got to remember that with young people. The young people don't have a long attention span. They're thinking about a thousand other things. And so have grace and then make them feel loved, like yeah. Renee said. So I think that's a very useful tip. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. We love your online conference and um, see you soon. Yeah.